Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. December 8th, 2017. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? When you were eight and you had bad Okay, we've all watched the TV show Cops. I watch it from time to time, and, you know, I have mixed feelings. I mean, the cops have to pick up the trash of society. We know that. It's a thankless job. We know that. Too many cops have been executed. We know that. The Black Lives Matter movement has intimidated police, resulting in many deaths of cops. We know that. But what don't we know? We don't know because it's not in the parlance of today, and most people wouldn't talk about it, especially those identified as libertarian or conservative for fear that they lose their police audience, is that there are bad apples in all professions and an outright psychopaths in all professions, by the way, as we can see, whether it be in acting, politics, teaching, you name it. Police work has the nuts as well. It's part of the human condition. But rarely have we ever seen a videotape, film, of someone executing someone in cold blood and getting away with it when he goes to trial. And that's the story today. Arizona cop acquitted for killing man crawling down hotel hallway while begging for his life. So I put it on michaelsavage.com so you can judge for yourself which side you're on. Now, it'd be very easy for me to not do this subject and just say Franken, Franken this, Franken that, more, more, Franken more, more Franken, you know, uh, Trump great, Franken bad, more great. I, I don't want to do that because that's not what I'm interested in doing at all, nor do I think it advances anyone's brain in any way. So, when I saw this videotape, I got so upset, I started screaming in the room. I said, I'm going to run with the story. So, what I'm going to do is play the tape and tell you the story. You don't even have to hear the story. Just listen to the cop's voice and tell me if you're hearing a, an insane man out to kill. Okay? You ready? Here we go. Children, leave the room. my instructions and do not make a mistake. You are to keep your legs crossed. Do you understand me? You are to put both of your hands palm down straight out in front of you. Push yourself up to a kneeling position. I said keep your legs crossed. I'm sorry. I didn't say this in conversation. Hey, put your hands in the air. Hands up in the air. You do that again, we're shooting you. Do you understand? Please do not shoot me. I'm then listen trying, to my instructions. I'm trying to just do what you Don't do. talk! Listen! Hands straight up in the air. Do not put your hands down for any reason. You think you're going to fall, you better fall on your face. Your hands go back in the small of your back or down. We are going to shoot you. Do you understand me? Yes, you piece of garbage, Crawl you. towards me. You filthy piece of Crawl garbage! You murder are you? Ladies and gentlemen of the Savage Jury, I rest my case. Should there be a federal retrial of this case for first degree murder of this cop and by the way his partner who stood in the hallway doing nothing? The partner could have gone and handcuffed this poor kid who was begging for his life at any time. Two brave men in body armor with machine guns? called because some kid waved a what was it a pellet gun in the window okay so they could have thought it was a real gun fine so they go there and they get him out of the room they get his girlfriend out and they tell her to crawl on her hands and knees lift her hands don't lift your hands cross your legs don't cross your legs i couldn't follow the instructions and i don't have a machine gun pointed at me 
So then they get the girl out of the place. Now they focus their hatred on this kid, the big, powerful cops with machine guns. So they feel it's dangerous. Maybe they thought there was a gun there. Maybe they didn't know it was a pellet gun. But what the cop does next shows that he is irrational and a psychopath, in my opinion. It shows he's a terrified, terrified man who uses his gun uh, as a, a crutch for his weakness. So it was investigated by an investigator who uh, notes a few things and says that, yes, the victim, when he reached behind himself as crawling while crawling and crying, was similar to reaching for a pistol, but it also looked as though the kid was pulling up his loose-fitting basketball shorts that had fallen down as he was ordered to crawl. The investigator noted he did not see anything that would have prevented officers from simply handcuffing the kid as he was on the floor. Moreover, forcing the kid to crawl toward the police like this increased the likelihood that uh, he would lose balance and make wild movements. And the cops' bizarre orders, which you heard, would confuse anyone, even a sober person. Moreover, here's an interesting detail from the Arizona Republic. The judge did not allow jurors to hear about an etching on the dust cover of the cop's rifle, which said, you're effed, because he felt it was prejudicial. Now, we know what would happen if this was a black kid. Stores would burn, cities would burn. But we don't do that. We email Jeff Sessions demanding a trial, a federal trial of this Arizona cop. That's what we do. That's our method of revolting. That's what I ask you to do. The judge should be investigated for not allowing jurors to hear about an etching on the madman's cover of his rifle, which said you're effed. You know, if you were doing a movie of a crazy cop, let's say a mad cop who liked to kill people, beat people up, you couldn't do better than this with a rifle that says you're after. I mean, if you're a movie maker, you know it's going to be in a movie. Harvey Weinstein, you probably have a lot of time on your hands right now. Maybe you're listening to me on WABC in New York, Harvey. But you really could. This is a good one. It's a redemption movie, Harvey. You get a, a rifle and a guy is at home with it. He's etching in your eft on it. You know, you build it up that way. I, I could even be a script consultant if you want, Harvey. I can be reached at 855-400-SAVAGE, uh, um, Harvey. You can call me right now. Okay, what would you like me to talk about now? Christmas? Play, let, play I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas by Bing Crosby. And I'll get nostalgic for you when cops were tough as nails. And there were far less shootings in America. Why was that? That when I was a kid, the cops were all big and mean and tough. And we respected them and we feared them. And almost no one ever got shot by a cop. Why is that? All right, turn it on. What happened to America? It seems like it's gone insane. I, I said the, the cops were tough as I was a kid. They were all men. There were no women cops. I'm just saying it. I mean, I've met, I met tough women cops. Don't get me wrong. They could whip five of us at once. I, and I'll, I'll repeat again. <laughs> Many years ago, I had a, a woman as a bodyguard who was an SFPD cop. I hope she's still listening. I haven't been in touch with her for years. She happened to be gay or a lesbian, whatever you call it. I don't know. And she was so tough. She was part German. I think part German and part Japanese, but she got the warrior from both sides. She got the Teuton and the uh, Samurai all in one. She loved me. She loved my show. So she was tough. This girl was tough. A tough lady, a, a real Viking. But what I'm saying is, in those days, the cops are all men, and they all had to be big. You had to be a certain height. Not today where the, they can hire a circus midget or get sued for affirmative action for not hiring a circus midget. You had to be a certain height, a certain weight. You had to be tough as nails. In black, white, it didn't matter what you were. You, they were tough guys. And the guys were afraid of them. We weren't tough kids. But we were kids and we did crazy things. All teenagers do. You know, we all have a bit of Tom Sawyer in all of us. So we did stupid things. And if the cops got you, they gave you a shellacking behind the 173rd precinct. And you never did it again. You, were never, you never did anything stupid again. And you learned to respect the laws. The French say the fear of... Uh, the fear of the police is the beginning of wisdom. That's a takeoff from the Bible, which says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I think that's in Ecclesiastes. Uh, but the French change it to the fear of the cops are the beginning, is the beginning of wisdom. Not anymore. What happened? How did the cops become so armed to, with machine guns now? Now, let's say the kid scared the, the, the brave cop with the machine gun. Why did he need a machine gun to go into that hotel room and body armor? Why didn't he go in with a handgun? 
You would have killed him anyway, by the way. But, okay, that's number one. But why didn't they have a billy club? Why didn't they have a taser? A beanbag? Something? What'd they have to kill this kid for? Moreover, how could a jury acquit this guy? Because there are many facts to this story that you have to look into. The kid begged, please don't shoot me before he was killed. He's crawling on the ground with his hands in the air, according to police reports. Uh, the cops said, when he reached behind his back to his waistline to pull up his shorts, I assumed there was a threat and I fired my weapon uh, five times. Okay. Your F was inscribed onto the gun that the cop used in the shooting, which was a violation of policy. The cop shot the kid with a personal AR-15 rifle, which the psychopath was allowed to use. The gun that the cop owned was inscribed with the phrase, you're effed, Tucson News now reports. The inscription on the cop's gun was a violation of department policy, which was one of the reasons he was fired. The cop's father also named Philip Bradsford, Brailsford, left the Mesa Police Department to join a local law firm. He was a lieutenant and had worked in the department's internal affairs unit. One other little note. The cop previously sought acting jobs before he became a cop, according to a profile on Casting360.com. He listed his interests as motorcycle riding, football, hunting, target shooting. And he said he is a guitar player with experience in a band as an, and is an Eagle Scout, an all-around grade-A American white man. Then why did he execute this kid? It's horrible. The feds must step in. It's not an easy story to report. I don't have to do it. How did he get off is the story. Have you seen the video of the Mesa, Arizona cop assassinating the young man crying not to be shot? Yes, I said assassinated in cold blood. But a jury acquitted him. How could a jury watch this video and reach this conclusion? This is worse than the murder of Kate Steinle. There is no arguing that this was a clear execution. The cop did not say to him, you might be shot. He said, you will be shot. It's like he wanted to kill him. He shot four or five shots with his AR-15. In my opinion, the cop is a psychopathic murderer. And there needs to be a federal takeover of the Mesa Police Department. This cop needs to be tried in a federal court. The original disturbance was because the assassinated young man was showing a pellet gun in his hotel room and someone saw it through a window and called the cops. And because he was drinking and having a good time with his girlfriend, the psychopathic cop shot him. You can hear the kid crying for his life. Look, I know that cops get put into impossible situations, but it was obvious this man was not only impaired but fearing for his life. If you're a cop and you hear sobbing like that, do you really think that someone is plotting to surprise you and shoot you? There is no way you conclude that. He asked if he had been drinking. It was obvious by the way he was moving on the ground with his feet behind his back he was impaired. And then he starts crying for his life. How could anyone shoot this man in cold blood? And how can you let him get away with it? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Extra, extra, hear all about it. Don't let the left kidnap God from Christmas. You can read about it on michaelsavage.com or on Newsmax, which is now linking to my articles a couple of times a week. And the big story is the Arizona cop acquitted for killing a man crawling down a hotel hallway while begging for his life. He had a name. The executed man had a name. His name was Daniel Shaver. Forced to crawl toward the police begging for his life, and the cop executes him, and worse yet, the cop gets off with murder. Okay. Adam KLIF, Dallas, Texas. Thank you for calling. Go ahead, please. Hello, Dr. Savage. Um, my wife is really good friends with Daniel's um, wife. Actually, the female in the room was actually an acquaintance, somebody he had met. And his job, I actually met Daniel Shaver a few years ago. Um, great guy, you know, father of two beautiful little girls. Um, he worked on the road, you know, providing for his family, um, worked in pest control, had these little pellet guns, you know, to take care of whatever environments he, uh, you know, was, was helping uh, to take care of. Um, and so, you know, he's out there doing his thing. And some of the things that really stuck out with me, and, and my wife is really good friends with Lainey, his wife, and we've hmm. 
definitely following this story. Um, we're, we're, and we listened to the verdict being read yesterday. But, I mean, if a sober person couldn't follow the instructions that the, that the officer was giving, how could a, you know, a slight, even a slightly inebriated person like Dan, like right. and why did why did the cop execute him with with an AR-15 assault rifle? Uh, why didn't they just why did they go up and cuff him? He was crying, begging for his life. Absolutely. Why didn't the other Why didn't the other cop run up there with a pair of handcuffs and slap him on him? He was on the ground with his hands behind his back. Yeah, and 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 the Mesa Police Association spokesperson came out afterwards and you know read his statement on this is absolutely what should have happened. You know, oh. use emotion and empathy in, in how we approach the situations. It's all about training. Well, if this police officer is trained, you know, what, what, why would he just, just shoot? I, I just, was, was, da was Daniel Shaver a father of two? Is that what you just said? Father of two beautiful young girls, yes, sir. So and, he killed a fa the cop killed a family. Oh, yeah, and his, his wife has been so torn up over this uh, since it happened. Um, yeah, my, my wife is very good friends with, with Daniel's wife. Well, do you agree with me that we have to pressure Jeff Sessions to, to have a federal civil rights trial against the cop and the police department? Absolutely, and because what I, what I said after the... Uh, well, let me say why I say that, Adam. It's not for effect. I'm very consistent in my analysis. I called for the same federal investigation of the Mexican who killed Kate Steinle. This murder is more egregious than that of Kate Steinle, because, A, we don't have a tape of the murder of Kate Steinle, and, B, we don't know whether the guy aimed for her or the gun went off or what. This we know the cop aimed to kill him, and this we know the cop said, I will kill you if you don't do everything I said. If a cop, tell, if a cop says that to me, I'm scared out of my mind. And I, <laughs> But if you watch the tape, nobody could comply with that order. I watched it, and I got confused from the crazy cop's orders, and I'm not laying on the ground. I'm not looking at the barrel of an AR-15, and I'm not panicked. I'm sober and looking at it, and I said I could never follow the instructions. How could this kid be expected to follow with this man, this father, this family man? I'm sending you God, faith, and reason, because right now, where is God? Where is God? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. What is this? What is Bobby I, I don't know. I'm not. Beyond the sea. Shock skin suit. Waiting for me. The age of, okay, I'm to, the, age of the uh, hot antipasto and the uh, shock skin suit and the grata zura is over. You know what I mean? That, that cool thing is dead. Frank Sinatra is dead and buried. I don't want to hear it anymore. There's another big story. You remember the Roy Moore accuser with the QVC jewelry they, they dug up? Remember they pulled a $100 bill through a trailer park and they found another one? They bought a jewelry on QVC. That lawyer, Allred, I want a federal investigation of her. How does she get away with this? Roy Moore accused Alter Story on yearbook signing to hold press conference. Well, they just held it. I want to know why Gloria Allred is not in handcuffs. Why are lawyers above the law is what I want to know. If I say an Arizona cop acquitted for killing a man crawling down a hotel hallway while begging for his life should be retried by the federal government, I would like to know why Gloria Allred is not in handcuffs. How many men's lives can she ruin at once? Republican Congressman Trent Franks resigns amid allegations of inappropriate behavior. I haven't heard all of those on the right screaming uh, about this much. Uh, they kept saying, as of yesterday, it was all on the left. I, I was asking what would happen if it was someone on the conservative side. Didn't hear a word about it. That storyline ended. Jerusalem riots spread to Indonesia and Malaysia as terror group Hamas promises day of rage. Now, of course, we're against the terror. We're against Hamas. But we knew that this would trigger it. Trump made a huge blunder, triggered this around the world. And the reason I know it was a mistake is because I woke up today and read that Dina Powell, Deputy National Security Advisor, a driving force behind the Trump administration's Middle East policy, plans to leave the White House as part of an anticipated wave of departures. No, not true. They threw her out. She pushed it. She drove it. She was the engine behind it. She made a disaster for the president and for the world. And we are now in a worse place than we were before towards a potential peace uh, settlement in Israel. A disaster. That's number four. One of the little trivial note. Many of you have asked me to remake the Savage Nation hats. I haven't made them in 15 years, right? 
Some of you who were original members of the Paul Revere Society still have them, all tattered. We put in an order for 1,000 of them only. I know that they're going to be gone shortly. You can order them on michaelsavage.com. There's one caveat, which she should have put up on the website. I'll have to call her after. They're going to take eight weeks. They're not going to be ready for Christmas, but they're going to be there. The Savage Nation hat with the white and the red. I wore it on a – where did I wear it recently? On a show. It was a TV show. And I don't like baseball hats. I'm not a baseball hat guy. I think they look stupid on men. But I like this hat because it says something. And, uh, you know, it's like Trump wearing a MAGA hat, MAGA hat, you know. I mean, because, look, it says something to the average Eddie out there, MAGA. That's something they can remember. MAGA. MAGA. It's easy. It's a, you take them. MAGA. 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 Don't let the left ban God this Christmas. Put God back in your life and the life of others. God, faith, and reason. Sales are about on par with the third week of Trump's war, which is very interesting. For those of you who have been praying for my demise, uh, it was premature. <laughs> to give you a modified uh, Mar what's it, Mark Twain. For those praying for my demise, uh, your prayers will not be answered shortly. They're a little premature. While the book did not take off as well as Trump's war, nor did it, did it sell as well in week two. A strange thing happened last week. A funny thing happened on the way to the bookstore. The sales went up, and they're moving back up to the weeks that followed the initial sale of Trump's war. And that is because I think that the actual readers of books are buying this book as opposed to readers of polemics. This is a really important book. And so if you want to put God back into your life, put God back into your workplace, put God back... Uh, into your office setting or whatever, or even your home on a, on a kitchen table. What would happen if you brought home a book like God, Faith, and Reason and put it in your uh, on your kitchen table? What would your kids say? It would, it would open up a conversation about God. I mean, if you're ready for that question, you got, this is a way to set it off, right? So maybe, just maybe, America's ready for God again. Then there's another story on michaelsavage.com where you can see this horrible videotape of the cop shooting the kid, the man, the father. Where did it go? Where did the story go? It's up here. Oh, here it is. Uh, top left, don't let the left kidnap God from Christmas. Then in memory of Mama Savage, her memorial was last night. God rest her soul. 15 years ago, 14 years ago, I can't believe it. Uh, Arizona cop acquitted, Savage Nation hats. Then you go down on the right. New Dustin Hoffman accuser claims harassment and physical violation on Broadway. What's odd about the story is not that he's holding her breast, and they actually caught the picture of it, which he didn't know till now. She caught one picture from many years ago. I don't know how. This is like a drugstore era of, of photography. You had to send it to, like, the corner drugs. He looks like Matt Lauer. I thought it was Matt Lauer. I guess they shaved his head for the role of the death of a salesman in this one. But he's a twin for Matt Lauer, like a, a dibbuk, a yum double. A double, a body double for Matt Lauer. Is there something genetic here or what? Is it the seltzer? I don't know. Where did he grow up? Is it the carbon dioxide that got into their brain? What did this? What man grabs a woman's breast in a, in a photo and thinks that's cute? Again, I never met anyone who did this. Never. What do you mean? You're taking a picture with a woman and you put your hand on her breast and then when the camera clicks, you take your hand off? What man does that? Dustin Hoffman. Why? I don't under even stand, I don't even understand the excitement of doing a thing like that. It's just to humiliate the girl. See, there's no sexual gratification in grabbing a woman like that. It's to make her feel uneasy, uncomfortable, in other words, to get power over her and make her look like a fool and squirming in your hands. That's what it is. So before this is over, I'm liable to become a real feminist before this ends. This is sickening. And Dusty... You just might hit the dust with this one. WABC in New York, uh, line nine. Tony, thanks for calling. What's on your mind? Which story caught your attention? Uh, yeah, the shooting. I'm a cop in Newark, New Jersey. I believe it's murder. If you, if you look at bizarre murder cases, CNN.com, you can see how quickly these shootings can go bad. Uh, again, bizarre murder. Not you again. It's him again? The crazy caller with the case that he keeps calling about? Yes, it, I think it was. There's one guy for 10 years, the same call. He wants us to go to a website about a friend. I, I can't do that. I can't do personal stuff. Did we did we replay the, the cop in an hour or two? We did? Okay, thank God that's over with. Well, let me give them a treat because it's almost a, it's Friday already, the 8th of December. I think by next week already it's, uh, 
It's Ganug. It's Fartik. It's over. They're already on. People are shopping already. They have snowflakes in their eyes. They're buying ski clothing. They're buying menorahs. They're buying crosses. They're, it's not going to be very serious time. Um, I think Trump's leaving for Mar-a-Lago a little early because a tape came up of him criticizing uh, Obama in 2011 for leaving early for uh, a, go a golfing in Hawaii. Uh, president Trump's 2011 tweet claiming former President Barack Obama held the White House Hanukkah party early in order to go on vacation is resurfacing after Trump held the White House Hanukkah party two weeks early this year. Trump hosted the White House Hanukkah party five days before the Jewish holiday begins. He had commented on a similar move by Obama in 2011 as follows. Donald J. Trump from 2011. Why was the Hanukkah celebration held in the White House two weeks early? At Barack Obama wants to vacation in Hawaii in late December. Sad. Hmm. Wow. Well, now he did the same thing. Well, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Something. So he wants to leave for Mar. Get out of, get out of Dodge. So he held a Hanukkah thing yesterday. Got it over with. Put Shel Shelley behind him. Did the menorah, spun the dreidel, and left, and that's all. Okay, here we are, folks. Let's take some calls and move on. I don't know if I can deal deal with this anymore. All right, WBOB in Jacksonville, line four. The same story. It's horrible of the cop killing the the young man, right? Yeah, right. When I'm saying it, I'm I'm not an expert, okay. But when you look at that video, and I want to thank you for putting that up. I'm going to email the DOJ immediately to complain Good. about this. Okay, because in fact, that cop, he was setting that kid up for failure. He was setting him up. He, kid was well, right, he says to him, do exactly as I say, so the kid does it. No, don't cross your legs that way. Cross them the other way. No, don't lift your hands up. Lift them up. Don't lift them up. The kid panicked. He didn't know what the hell he was talking did about. Hear, did you hear what the kid said? He was crying. The kid said he was crying. He said, I'm trying to do what you tell me to do. And then what did the crazy cop say to him? I didn't say this was a conversation. This little Hitler has got to go to jail. Hitler cop, Hitler cop, Hitler cop, Hitler cop, Hitler cop. That was like a mafia murder in Brooklyn, where I grew up. I mean, that was no mafia murder. That was a cop murder. And I'm talking about the cop murder. You know, but that's how bad it was. It was a setup. You know what I mean? He wanted to kill that kid. What are you doing in Jacksonville on B.O.B. if you grew up in Brooklyn? Are you in witness protection? No, I'm not in witness protection. I moved down here with the Marine Electricity. We spoke a while back. Actually, no, I'm joking. No, you have that kind of uh, voice where like yeah. a witness protection where you run a little like well, you I run a dress, a dress store in Florida, that kind of thing. No, I was the one that my father was the vice president of the big union in New York. I sent you my book about a month ago. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, you said book. You triggered me. Did you, did you, what book? What what book is it that you want from me? Can you send me um, God faith? Off the talk, the talking already. Uh, from your voice to God's ear to the U.S. mail. Yes, it'll be on the way shortly. Oh my God! How am I going to sleep tonight? This video, I don't know whether to do it again, but I'm going to do it again. I want you to listen again to the Arizona cop. And I want you to be honest with yourself. And I want you to go to michaelsavage.com and watch the video showing the police assassinating Daniel Shaver in Mesa, Arizona. And then you're going to ask yourself, how could the jurors have dismissed, thrown this case out, finding the cop not guilty of second-degree murder, not even of reckless manslaughter? I want you to listen to this tape. Then I want you to watch the tape of the kid begging for his life and then being machine gunned to death. So let's play the tape. Now, but wait, before don't run, don't play it. If there are any children listening, I'm not being facetious. I'm not being for effect here. Don't let them listen to this. You know, but wait, there is something else that has to be added here. Because a caller earlier I know was a faker when he said he told his kids to always listen to a cop. And that if one of his kids got shot, he would uh, accept it. I knew that was the, the lie. That gave it away. But you know what? There is a, a lesson here. If you do have children or you're listening... You must always comply with cops because I was taught that even as a kid, even in New York, in the days I grew up, even for a mere traffic stop, one of the guy's fathers, we all learned from the other guy's fathers, that's how it was in those days, neighborhood stuff, Elliot's father said, listen, guys, if you're ever pulled over by a cop, be respectful and do what they say. Do not argue with them. 
Save it for a court of law. Get a lawyer. Never argue with a cop. I was told that when I was 15, about to get a driver's license at 16. So nothing has changed except now you've got a lot of trigger-happy cops on drugs who are carrying machine guns uh, and a lot of stupid jurors who can be swayed to, to do almost anything with jury selection and jury rules and trick uh, lawyers. I'll be back to play that tape right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Uber disclosed. Uber, did you hear they disclosed the breach of 57 million passengers and drivers' records? Did you know hackers accessed personal information? Names, addresses, driver's license numbers of the drivers, and the names, and the email addresses, and the phone numbers of passengers in Uber. Now, although this breach was recently announced, this personal information was stolen over a year ago. If you're only monitoring your credit, your identity can still be stolen in ways you may not even detect. And so I say, good thing there's LifeLock. LifeLock detects a wide range of identity threats, threats, threats you might miss by just monitoring your credit, like someone stealing from your 401k or committing a crime in your name. And if there's a problem, a U.S.-based identity restoration specialist will work to fix it. We know no one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses, but listen to me, LifeLock can help you see more threats to your identity than anyone. So go to LifeLock.com or call 1-800-LIFELOCK. Code Savage, that's Code Savage for a big 10% off your LifeLock membership. You heard me. LifeLock.com and save 10% now. Call on KBET in Las Vegas on the cop killing the unarmed young man, a father of two, who was crying and begging for his life. Go ahead. What do you see? What do you say? Yeah, Dr. Savage, I've talked to you before. I'm retired. I was a, uh, have a... PhD in clinical psychology or clinical psychologist, but just part of my profession was listening to people, their attitude, what they say, how they say it, their voices, so forth, and just listening to him, he definitely shows a form of a psychopathy. Uh, he shows a fear. One, two, um, uh, a psychopathic nature. And well, the, no, if you listen to the tenor of the cop's voice, it's not just a command voice. I know what a command voice sounds like. This is on a different level. This is a, a paranoid schizophrenic voice, in my opinion. That's what I'm saying. There's something, there's something so wrong with this, Dr. Call, that I'm going to play it again. Fire it away. Listen to this, and you may, you'll, be the own, you'll be your own judge. And by the way, listen carefully and watch the tape on michaelsavage.com before you make a decision. Listen to my instructions and do not make a mistake. You are to keep your legs crossed. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. You are to put both of your hands, palms down, straight out in front of you. Push yourself up to a kneeling position. I said, keep your legs crossed! I'm sorry. I didn't say this in conversation. Hey, Put your hands! Piece of gar- you piece of you garbage! You go to jail, you piece of garbage! Face. Your hands go back in the small of your back or down. We are going to shoot you. Do you understand me? Yes, you piece of Crawl garbage, you. Me. You filthy piece Crawl of cop garbage. Yes, you cop garbage, you. You cop garbage. Don't End of story. I want a federal investigation. I want Jeff Sessions to... Take over the Mesa Police Department and try this man for murder. What was true for Kate Steinle's murderer is true for this cop. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 8th. 
2017. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Today the bell tolls for thee. Now, I was going to do Don't Let the Left Kidnap God this Christmas, and I maybe will do a little of it. I told you that Dina Powell and, uh, is leaving the White House a day after her disastrous policy on announcing through the president that Jerusalem, uh, Israel's capital, blah, 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 the U.S. Embassy removed, blah, blah, blah. So the Middle East erupts as I was afraid it would. And now she's leaving the White House. We're supposed to believe it's coinc not coincidental. It is. And uh, we have the, the, the crying man, a cop executing a crying young man. And then the cops found not guilty. It's worse than the Kate Steinle thing. I didn't do gluten news you can use. I don't know if I'm going to even get to that. But it's a very interesting topic that I've restudied that I want to get to because my background is in the field of human nutrition. It's a field that's eternally evolving. And anyone who doesn't understand science doesn't know that you can change opinions as new evidence emerges. So if you still have the same opinion on, on the same thing forever, whether it's political or uh, scientific, it means that you're a rigid-minded person who cannot understand how things, how, how, how knowledge can change your opinion. And uh, that's true whether it's to, with regard to a president or uh, gluten. With regard to time that is left on this show, I just want to talk about the kid being killed for no reason. And maybe we should talk about police tactics. Now, I understand the sword cuts two ways. I understand the cops in a split of a second can be killed. So you got the kid on the ground crying. He's complying with the crazy cop. He makes the mistake of reaching behind his back as he's crawling on the rug because his pants are falling off. So he ins instinctually, as a, a father of two children, he reaches to pull his pants up. Cop kills him, executes him with a machine gun. I never saw anything quite like it. I mean, if you read about it, it's one thing. But if you watch it, your your heart stops. And I invite you to watch it on michaelsavage.com because although I found it on another site, they cut out the last uh, a minute and 28 seconds of the actual execution, which we then went to another site and got and put it up on my website. And you have to judge. Once you see this, you'll, you'll, you may change your whole opinion on interactions with police. And I want to say that I back police and I still back police and always will back police and I have police in my family and I respect the police. I've called them the Thin Blue Line and I continue to call them the Thin Blue Line. But in every profession, in every walk of life, not only are mistakes made, but there are bad apples. This cop was crazy. By any definition of what psychopathic behavior is, this man was insane and never should have been a cop. So the police department itself is liable for a major lawsuit. But what's that going to do for the kid, the, the, the man's father? The, I'm sorry, I'm getting so upset. The, the children of this man who was executed. I want to know why the Justice Department has not yet investigated the Mesa Police Department and retried this cop. Maybe they will. And speaking of the Justice Department, there's some good news from the Trump administration. They are moving to investigate Planned Parenthood's fetal tissue practices, long overdue. Because the baby killers need to be brought to justice. And maybe this is the beginning of the end of these baby killers. I don't know. But Trump may do what he said he would do here. That would be a lot better than doing things like the Jerusalem move, which does not benefit America in any way. It just satisfies a small group of uh, activists. 855-400-7282. These are the topics. Let's take some calls. KKOH in uh, Reno, Dan, line two. Go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, thank you for taking my call. Sir, I called you today just to share with you as a former law enforcement officer and a uh, 10-year military veteran who served as a military policeman. I don't know about today, but back in the day, and it wasn't too long ago, 
there were three components that had to be satisfied before the use of deadly force could be authorized. Hmm. That was intent, opportunity, and capability. In other words, the individual that you're dealing with had to have an intention of doing, you know, severe bodily harm or death upon another mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they had to also possess the opportunity mm-hmm. to uh, employ that intention. Mm-hmm. And not only that, they had to have the capability of following through with that intention mm-hmm. within that opportunity. Mm-hmm. I didn't see any of that in that video. None of it. So you see the kid crying, begging for his life, saying, please don't shoot me. He's in a state of panic. I couldn't follow the cop's crazy instructions with his psychopathic voice. And his pants start to fall off as he's being forced to crawl on his stomach. So he reaches to pull his pants up and gets executed by by an AR-15. To me, it's clear and present uh, first-degree murder. Well, I, I, I saw an awful lot of uh, uh, intent, opportunity, and capability on the part of that officer, but not on the part of that kid that was killed. <laughs> well, how did the jury relief the officer of all charges how'd that happen well because they were manipulated their minds were manipulated they weren't well, what do you think about the judge who did not allow jurors to hear about an etching on the dust cover of the rifle the cop used to shoot mr shaver with which said you're effed he didn't let them hear about that you know that, that was a violation of that was a violation of the police department's rules what cop would have that on the rifle of his on the, on the barrel of, excuse me on the uh, dust cover of his rifle you're effed on it well who would allow that in the police department well i don't know if they allowed it or not but it certainly demonstrates intention mm, very good okay well look we're we're dealing with a very tragic situation the kids the young man who was executed Mr. Shaver left two young children and a wife. And so let me send you God, faith, and reason. I don't know where to turn today. When I was going to do the other topics, but when I watched the video just before the show, I went berserk. Ask the guys. I started screaming and yelling, and it, it occurred to me. It, 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 it hit me so hard. When I heard the voice, the cop's voice, I heard a crazy man. And I thought, what if I were in that situation on the floor? Would I have even been able to follow him? When he's telling me, he's giving me conflicting commands. Then he's saying, don't talk to me. This is not a conversation. When you're just asking him, excuse what do you want me to do? And he says, shut up. It's not a conversation. This was an execution. And yet the jurors who watched the full, who watched the full vi- video uh, of the execution of Daniel Shaver said that the police officer, former police officer Philip Mitchell Brailsford, is uh, not guilty. Six-week trial. He had faced as many as 25 years in prison for the second-degree murder charge. His attorney, Michael Picaretta, put an arm around the murderer after the verdict was read, excuse me, the uh, released officer, and smiled and said, there are no winners in this case. But Mitch had to make a split-second decision on a situation that he was trained to recognize as someone drawing a weapon and had one second to react. Laney Sweet the executed man's widow shook her head no after the decision was read and later declined to answer questions. She and uh, Shaver's parents have filed wrongful death lawsuits against the city of Mesa. Um, Mark Garagos, an attorney representing the Shaver family, called the shooting an execution and said the justice the system miserably failed, a, a report of the Arizona Republic. Why don't we get Mark Garagos on the show next week? He goes back to the OJ days, doesn't he? That's the last I saw his name. Whoa, it just shows you what could happen to you at the blink of an eye in this country today. I mean, let alone a woman in a parking lot. You know, they walk, you know, you're going shopping for the holidays, and a lot of people, woman, man, but let's say women alone in a parking lot. You get out of your car and a guy accosts you, puts you up against the car, and puts a gun to your head, and says, Get back in the car. What are you going to do in that split second? Do you know the rules of avoiding getting killed? Does anyone know the rules? Women, have you studied this? What the ha- If you can keep your head when, all, when, when that happens to you, what to do? Never comply with anyone who tells you to get back in the car because you're dead. You're going to be raped, robbed, and, and murdered. You never comply. Whether he has a gun or not, you're going to die one way or the other, so you run. Because if you run, he's not going to shoot you. Because if he shoots you, what he, nothing. Everyone will see him shoot you, so you run. You run, you run, you run. You make believe you're going to comply, and then you run. Don't... don't Please don't tell me you've studied martial arts and you're going to put a key in his eye. You know, incomplete martial arts training is more dangerous than you can imagine. More people have been killed thinking they're MMA fighters who aren't, 
and they pick on a street tough guy who can kill them with one blow. So please don't try a karate move like you saw in a movie with Barbara Streisand. You'll get killed. The best thing is to use the number one martial art, which is run away in that situation. That's the number one martial arts move in that situation is run away. Steve is an officer of the law who I respect greatly because they are the only thing we have between us in total chaos and a breakdown of our society. And I hope they understand where I'm coming from because we have to respect the fact that there are crazy people in all walks of life. This cop, in my opinion, is crazy. He never should have been a cop. Uh, WJRW in Michigan, great area. You must be up in the uh, Detroit area. Steve, welcome to the program. Line 8, go ahead, please. Michael, thank you for taking my call. I'll give you a brief background. I started my 25th year in law enforcement. I'm a supervisor and I'm a former trainer. I have not seen the video, but I listened to the audio that you just played. And this comes down to one issue. It's a training issue. When you're in that situation, I've been in that situation before, you're supposed to give loud, clear, and concise commands. They, they were loud, but they were not clear and concise. He also had a partner there. His partner had mm. gone up and coughed at gunpoint. And then right, the other partner was hiding behind the wall. I mean, if you watch the video, you'd be shocked to see the other partners hiding behind a wall with another machine gun. Well, he, I, I, heard, I heard him say, show me your hands, and he had him down on the ground. He had him cross his legs. Okay, perfect. Run up and cuff him at that point. Have your partner hold him at gunpoint. You run up and cuff him. Or vice versa. Okay. Well, that's what I saw. At that point, the kid's on the ground. He's crossed his legs. He's put his hands on the ground. So the other guy should run up and cuff him, and that's the end of the story, right? That That is the end of the story, and that's how it should have ended. I don't know what went on here. Why did this cop induce him to continue to... He kept saying, crawl toward me, crawl toward me. Then he said, now stand up. Don't stand up. Stand up. Don't stand up. The kid didn't know what to do. Another thing with that etching on that gun, I want to know where the supervisor was because... Uh, well, I think that's why the attorney, Mark Garagos, is going to sue the, the Mesa, Mesa Police Department because the Mesa, the Mesa Police Department's in a real mess here. And, and it's against department rules to have a rifle that says you're effed on it. This is right out of a movie of, called, like, Bad Cop. Steve, let me send you a Christmas present, God, Faith, and Reason. Maybe we can all put our heads together and find God somewhere here in all of this. What if it was your child? What if it was your son who was in a hotel room, let's say? He had a couple of beers and he had a pellet gun with him, this, which this guy used for work. He was a pest control guy. And he picked it up to show it to someone, and someone saw it through a window and said, oh, there's a man with a gun. All right, you can mistake a gun. And they call a desk. The desk calls the cops. The cops come in. I understand all of that. They don't know if he was armed or not. But at a certain point, can't you understand that the man is no threat? And as the last caller said, just put cuffs on him? Well, I guess not. That's that. So uh, let me put it this way. What about killers? Are they born or are they made? That's interesting. Because this cop was a killer in my estimation, in my opinion. And, you know, I turned to God, Faith, and Reason, the chapter on Jewish Gangster Finds God, where... This is an interesting interview. I had him on the show, and he had been interviewed by magazines before me. Michael Hardy, he's passed away. He's dead by now. He was a really bad guy. He had been shot eight times, stabbed many times, 27 years in the worst prison in this country. He's as hard as a rock. And uh, he said that he only found God after he was broken in prison by disease. And he said, disease broke him, and that's when he found God. He said, because God wants to break you. I didn't quite know, and I hope I never know, what he's talking about with that regard. Because, I, God, I found you. Trust me up there. No need to break me. Uh, <laughs> no need to break me, big guy. I'm here. I'm here for you. So I wrote the book. But the question is about murderers. So Michael Hardy says, let me answer that question. Kings and killers are born. They're not made. Great kings are made, okay? Great, because they step off their throne and they look in people's eyes. They don't look at the top of their heads. But killers are made. Now, I, you want to know the point, the validity of this question, of what I'm saying? He said, I'll tell you what. 
Six million Jews went into the gas chamber. Six million, apparently they, some of them were hoodwinked, but none of them took the opportunity to kill the last Nazi before they walked into that gas chamber. Just grab a pistol and kill them, knowing you were going to die anyway. You understand, he said? I got in a gunfight in Hollywood. He tells the story of that gunfight, and then he talks about killers being born or made. In my book, God, Faith, and Reason, it's a great, great piece called Jewish Gangster Finds God. I invite you to read it because it will be the best read of your life. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Don't let the left kidnap God from Christmas. And for years, I've urged you to resist the onslaught of criticism and pressure by the left to give up the values that you are fighting to keep. And as we draw closer to the Christmas holiday, I want you to remember that the left has hijacked every last piece of decency in this nation. And a holiday once known for nativities and family has devolved into consumerism and rampant political correction. And that's why I wrote God, Faith, and Reason. It is my attempt to give something back to God for all he has given me. And so that's the whole story. And I want to turn again for one moment, if I can, in the short time that remains, from the Jewish gangster finds God in my book. And he says, well, what changed my life? I was in Corcoran, okay? I had sepsis of the spine. I helped a guy escape out of Donovan Prison, a guy named, and he names him. I got the warden fired. I did it for that reason, to get the warden fired. Anyway, what happened is I was dying, and I made a prayer. I said, Lord, this cop came in, and he started making the, me sit up. I had sepsis. I had such pain in my back. I had a few days to go. I said, if you ever did this to me on the yard, I'd kill you. But now I'm dying, so you're coming in here to feed off me? He said, well, I said, but I'm going to get out in a few days. He said, no, you're not. You're doing life. I said, no, I get out November 27th. He must have looked at the computer. I never seen him again. I was dying. Okay, I made a prayer that night. God, please don't let me die. I promise on my soul I will change my life. This is after 27 years in prison. Now I finally broke, just a couple of days after I'd finished the 17 years for murder. He said, I broke. And I said, I won't take vengeance on anybody, and I won't do anything except. And that's all in Jewish Gangster Finds God in God, Faith, and Reason. So if you think it's a preachy book, think again. Join the Savage Nation. Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Now, I don't understand how a jury could be so stupid as to find this cop not guilty on all charges. I cannot understand this. As long as I live, it shows you how perverted our court systems are. And I'll go a step further. You're not going to want to hear this either. But you know what? I'm going to go for broke this week. You don't like me for what I said about Trump's fake tax reform, which screws all of the people who voted for him, especially business owners. You didn't want to hear that because most of you who disagree with me do not own businesses. You don't know you're going to get screwed with the Chapter S. you got no deduction. You're going to pay more. I don't care what you think. My job is to tell you what I think. Then you could agree or disagree. I don't need to lie to make a living. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to start today because I didn't start yesterday. And I'm not going to start tomorrow. This cop is a murderer. He's an executioner. And Trump made a huge blunder in, in saying he was going to move the embassy at that time. He set off riots around the Arab world. Those are my opinions. I could have said the opposite. I could have sat there like the phonies in the media who say everything Trump does is right. I am the reason Trump is president. I wrote Trump's war because I believed in him. I pushed Trump, and I told you the Eddies and the Edettes, the Ediths. I said, if you haven't voted before, go out and vote now. It was I who did it, nobody else. Certainly others supported him, but no one as vociferously as I did. It was I who said to the undecided and the deplorables, take a chance one more time. I know you've been screwed before. Go out and vote for Trump. I know what I said. I wrote Trump's war. I got him elected. And now we're sitting here saying, okay, he's still doing some good things. Good. But when he makes wrong decisions, because either he's making them or people around him are making them, 
or lobbyists are making them, or God knows the swamp is making him say these things, it is my obligation to tell you what I think. Dina Powell, Deputy National Security Advisor, the driving force behind the Trump administration's Middle East policy, suddenly announces today that she's departing the Trump White House. Suddenly, she was kicked out on her skirt for pushing the Jerusalem decision, in my estimation. Can I prove it? No, I'm not in the White House. I'm an outsider looking in. But I have to come to conclusions as an outsider looking in, not an insider looking out. Okay? And I thank God I'm outside looking in, because it gives me the independence that I need. So that's what we're talking about. Do we have time to play that horrible tape again at this time? It's a minute long? No, not now. I'm an expert on voices. I hear insanity. I hear insanity in his commands. I hear a terrified, insane cop who was looking for an excuse to execute somebody. That's what I hear. The bad story is down on michaelsavage.com, and I warn you, if you're a a parent, do not let your child watch this. It took me a while to get the actual video of the Arizona cop as he executes the man who is complying with his order to the T, telling him to crawl down the hallway. He says, cross your legs, put your hands up. The kid does it and starts to cry. He says, if you don't follow my instructions, you will die. He executed this kid. The worst part is the cop got off scot-free. I don't know how. There should be a federal retrial of this cop who should be tried for for murder, first-degree murder. All on michaelsavage.com. I am calling for a federal investigation and a retrial of this cop by the Justice Department. If you watch this tape, you will come away sick and revulsed, angry, and you'll ask yourself, how does a cop like this kill a man crawling down a hall, hotel hallway unarmed, the young guy is begging for his life. He has no gun. And this psychotic murderer, this psychopathic killer, this cop, says, if you do anything wrong, I'm going to kill you. If you move your foot the wrong way, if you move the hand the wrong way, I will kill you. And then he shoots him with a machine gun. I've never seen anything like it. So they tried the cop, and the cop gets off scot-free. I want a federal investigation. Arizona cop acquitted for killing man crawling down hotel hallway while begging for his life. This is the story of the day to me. It's the biggest story for many reasons. The killing was in cold blood. The cop must be retried by the federal government. Uh, he executed this man who was crying and begging for his life, executed him with a machine gun. And yet, the jurors found the cop not guilty of second-degree murder and reckless manslaughter. It's a shocking story. And what I want you to do is look at the video. It took me a while to actually pull the part up where he gets killed. It's on michaelsavage.com. It's linked there. Arizona cop acquitted for killing man crawling down hotel hallway. If you can watch that video and then call me, I'd appreciate it before you. Don't call me before watching it, please. Oh, by the way, is an interesting side note from the Arizona Republic. The judge in this case did not allow jurors to hear about an etching on the dust cover of the cop's rifle that he used to shoot the young man, which said, you're F blank blank K-E-D. Now, what cop who was not a psychopath would put that on his rifle? What police department would let someone with a rifle that has an etching that says, you're f on it, stay on the force knowing that the man is probably deranged? Uh, do we have the time to play the short version of the tape? Okay, I want you to listen carefully on the Savage Nation. instructions and do not make a mistake. You are to keep your legs crossed. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. You are to put both of your hands, palms down, straight out in front of you. Push yourself up to a kneeling position. I said keep your legs crossed. I'm sorry. I didn't say this in conversation. Keep put your hands Your hands go back in the small, your back are down. We are going to shoot you. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. 
premeditated murder. Crawl towards me. Crawl towards me. Premeditated murder. Don't go. Okay, I've had enough of this. That's the end of the road. If Jeff, if Jeff Sessions does not try this man on federal charges, I'm out. I'm done. You know, I went ballistic on the Mexican who killed Kate Steinle. But I will tell you, watching this video, t this audio videotape of this deranged psychopathic executor in a cop's uniform with a machine gun killing an unarmed man on the ground is the last straw for me. I want a federal civil rights trial for this cop. I don't care whether he was acquitted by a stooge jury in Mesa, Arizona. This is the most egregious example of a cop executing an unarmed man I've ever seen in my life. I'm very upset right now because if you listen to the cop's voice, he says, I will kill you. I will shoot you. He didn't say may. He said, I will shoot you if you, if you don't do anything right. Let me tell you something about talk radio just for a minute before we get back to the Arizona cop who executed this man crawling down the hotel hallway while begging for his life and crying. This unarmed man begging for his life and crying, and this cop executed him. I believe the cop is a psychopath by what I hear in his voice and by the actions he took. I mean, you tell a guy to put your feet behind you and cross them and then to crawl down the hallway, and if you make a mistake, I will kill you? Now, if you were under such stress, you wouldn't know what to do. And that's what the cops set him up for, to make one mistake so he could justify executing him with his all-powerful AR-15 semi-automatic weapon. I've never seen anything quite like this naked execution in my entire life. If I had seen this in a third-world country, I would say, well, I guess that's what goes on in a lawless nation. And yet he was tried. The cop was tried. And the jurors found him not guilty of second-degree murder and reckless manslaughter? My friends, if Jeff Sessions does not try this man, if Jeff Sessions does not try him in a federal courtroom, I will say all is lost with this administration. Now, let me tell you something about radio, now that I've told you what I believe about this. It would be very, very safe, very safe and cowardly for me to tell you I'm not going to not have covered this story. Because a large proportion of my audience consists of police, spouse of police, retired police. And you would say, well, you're going to offend your core audience. So you say, well, don't do it. I'll just be like one of the um, ham actors on television. Don't cover this story because you'll lose part of your P1. And as far as yesterday when you criticized Trump saying he's going to move the embassy to Jerusalem, don't cover that because you'll lose your P1 religious audience who will not like you. So don't cover that. Be like one of the ham actors on television and cover the same stuff every day. Say Roy, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore. Just say it over and over again. Just Roy Moore. Keep doing Roy Moore. But you see, I'm a truth teller, the best I can be. That's why I dedicated God, Faith, and Reason to the ultimate truth giver. And so I have to do this story because I watched it. I said, I can't believe what I'm watching. America has to see this. They have to judge for themselves, and they have to demand a federal trial of this cop. I did the same thing with the Kate Steinle murder. Remember her? Remember she was found? he was found not guilty because the jury was stacked? And I said there must be a retrial on the federal charges, and most of you agreed with me? Well, why wouldn't you agree with me on this one? Huh? Why? Because he's a cop, and he's above the law? There are rotten apples in all professions. There are, there are surgeons who are drunks. There are surgeons who cut the wrong nerve and leave people crippled. There are surgeons who cut an artery and kill people. It happens because either they're incompetent or they're drugged up. Well, it's the same in every profession. Here's a clear miscarriage of justice. Tell me why the other brave officer didn't come over and cuff the kid. He could have walked over and cuffed him at that point. Why did the other brave officer stand there and watch the execution? So this was investigated by a detective. The body camera footage can be seen on michaelsavage.com. The detective investigating the shooting agreed that the poor man who was killed, as he reached behind himself crawling on the ground crying, was similar to reaching for a pistol. But he said it also looked as though the victim was pulling up his loose-fitting basketball shorts that had fallen down as he was ordered to crawl.
The investigator also noted he did not see anything that would have prevented officers from simply handcuffing the victim as he was on the floor. Did you hear what I just said? At this point, this kid was so scared to death, he had nothing in his hands, he was unarmed, he was crawling toward the psycho with the machine gun, with a, with a, a badge and a gun, and the other officer stood there and let him be executed. In my opinion, the other officer should be tried as well. And here's another little detail from the detective who, who studied this. Forcing the victim who was executed to crawl toward the police like this increased the likelihood that the victim would lose balance and make wild movements. And the cop's bizarre orders were probably confusing even to a sober person. Again, the judge did not allow jurors to hear about an etching on the dust cover of the psychopath's rifle, which was used to kill the young man, which said, quote, you're effed, because he felt it was prejudicial. The victim's parents have filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the city of Mesa, Arizona. The psycho cop was fired for poor performance two months after the shooting. He is free and walking on the streets. He is a danger to everyone around him, in my opinion. What do you think? Yes or no? Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Don't let the left kidnap God from Christmas, which I believe is now up on michaelsavage.com. Don't let the left kidnap God from Christmas is my lead story. For years, I have urged my radio listeners to resist the onslaught of criticism and pressure by the left to give up the values they have fought to keep. As we draw closer to the Christmas holiday, I remember the Christmas of yesteryear, a time when God was at the forefront of the holiday season. Today, the left has hijacked every last piece of decency in this nation, and a holiday once known for nativities and family has devolved into consumerism and rampant political correction. I implore you and your family to remember God this Christmas. For myself, I decided to give back to God for all he has given me and my family, and I wrote God, Faith, and Reason for God. In this book, I chronicle the glimpses of God I have experienced in my lifetime. All of us have our own unique beliefs about God. And recognizing this, I wrote the following about the question many of us face in our lifetime. Where is God? Well, here's what I wrote. People see God in their own way every day. Some people say they stand on a shoreline listening to the waves pound against the shore and feel closer to God, or they walk on a beach or in a forest. There's that famous song from many years ago, every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky, then I know why I believe. Those are the ways people see communion with the greatest spirit to which we are all connected. After all, what are we? In addition to being the blood, the bone, the vessels, the tissue, we are spirit. And everything we come into contact with resonates on or with our spirit, for better or for worse. We know that some people can bring us down or give us a headache. Some can bring us up. Some can make us happy. Some can make us sad. Some can elevate us. What is that all about? It's about the fact that we're like tuning forks and we resonate with other energy forces. The other energy forces can be other people, a pounding surf, an animal, a dog, a cat, a bird, a cloud. But the ultimate tuning fork in the sky is what we're talking about in this book. How can we tap into that resonance? Some people go to church, and in joining a congregation, they are better able to resonate with the higher power. I remember when I was a young boy, I asked my grandfather, who died long before I was born, this question, where is God? The word came down that my grandfather was not a religious man. You see, I never met him. That he didn't go to a temple to pray. Instead, I was told he could be out in nature with his back to a tree and talk to God. In many ways, the same is true for me today. And that's my article, Don't Let the Left Kidnap God from Christmas. It's in God, Faith, and Reason. And on a purely commercial level, I will note, and this is very strange, that the third week of sales are almost equal to that of Trump's war. The first two weeks were not equal to that of Trump's war, which was a highly political book. But then it drops off, as all books do, in week three. This one stabilized in week three. So there is a thought that perhaps because the book is about God, faith, and reason. People are suddenly talking about it, and just maybe we can put God back into 
homes across America. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.